Yo, what's up guys, welcome back. So next match, Cross Banalist Cup. Let's take a look. Next matchup here in uh, Group C, right? We have, um, I feel, one of the Underdark decks this year uh, in this Cross Banalist Cup, and that's Chainburn. It's a uh, Ryan Hughes decklist from Worlds, right? I think we all know the, the particular decklist. Uh, it's going to take on uh, also a deck that recently got more support, but again, um, for now, not too super competitive. But back then, it was one of the best decks. So this is one of, at least I changed the uh, decklist to uh, one of the world's uh, decklists from back then. Um, one thing though that caught my attention, um, you know, that, that's not really too common I felt, was uh, no exact caliber and uh, again I, I um, um, saw a couple of decklists like first place from worlds back then, second place from uh, Stefano Memoli from Europe as well, from Italy, and the first place was a Japanese player I think, and both of them weren't running exact caliber. So, I went with the rules decklist. Um, it is what it is. It feels a bit awkward as well. Uh, because I, you know, last time I played in Sector Swat was um, with a new support from a couple of months ago, and also with Lynx, and of course that that like playing with Insectors, you're running out of uh, monster zones really fast. Uh, so Chainburn, uh, so which deck has the advantage? Um, we've seen the votes and uh, it depends really. The the thing is is that Chainburn can you know, like, like, well, I was about to say lock up. You, you have stuff like Wabuku, Threatening Roar. Uh, the thing is, is, though, is that if Insectors start off uh, well, like, you know, like, like Dragonfly or Centipede uh, and having access to Hornet, the Chainburn is going to have, like, a, you know, a huge... Um, uh, it's going to be difficult for Chainburn to win that particular... Um, you know, like that particular duel because Hornet will just pop uh, all of the sets and like as you see stuff like Dimensional Fisher, you know, non-chainable stuff is, is, is just not as good uh, against uh, uh, Insectors, you know, a deck that kind of punishes uh, your opponent from uh, committing to the board and I feel here, and that's the thing with Insectors, most of the time, depending on the situation, it kind of just feels better to, you know, not go for the extra deck summon and keep your Insectors on board. So, this was quite of an easy duel, but let's face it, it was mainly because of Heavy Storm. So, game number two, and I feel, uh, at least back then, I felt I was getting Rickrolled. You'll see it in a couple of moments. But uh, again, go first, and okay, I know that I'm uh, under Pot of Duality, but again, I want to, you know, keep the pressure going, um, get those Hornet pops at least once per turn. And uh, set three, one of them being a Mystical Space Typhoon, so that also definitely helps out, Try right? To hit the potential end phase uh, Roar or Robuku or something like that, right? So Dragonfly again, and th this is huge. I mean, uh, without links, you can't really link away the Ojama tokens. I'm forced to kind of pop my own Ojama tokens, first of all, to, you know, free up space. Even without Ojama tokens, the deck struggles of, you know, like like nowadays you can just link them away for, what is it called, Picofalian, I believe the name is. But back then that wasn't the case. So, uh, Call of the Haunted for Dragonfly again, you know, establishing my board. I'm still sitting at, what is it, after Secret Barrel 5,003, uh, no, 5,100 eventually because of 300 burn damage. So, again, next turn I should be able to go for game if, again, there is no roar or whatever. Uh, so equip, um, what is it called, Giga Mantis, you know, the monster reborn, reborn something, special summon something from Dragonfly, plus the Centipede Search, right? So again, kind of establishing my board, but as you know, I'm quite low, low on life points. Uh, you know, the Chain Burn deck can quickly, um, like, add up those burn cards, like, you know, um, what's it called, Just Desserts, and what is it called, the Secret Blast, I believe the name is, that's an iffy card. It's like, um, what, what is it, it deals 300 burn damage to your opponent from, for every card they control, and if your opponent control or destroys the secret, secret blast, I believe, uh, your opponent will also, yeah, that's the card in my opponent's hand, uh, your opponent will also get another 1k uh, damage, so it's like a huge, huge burning card, especially if I, you know, want to pop it with Hornet, and that's a problem, we know that they are, bl uh, what, is it Blazing Mirror Force? The Burn Mirror Force? And this... Again, I felt I was getting... It, it was my mistake, honestly. I, I just, you know, should have kept the Insectors on my side of the field. And kind of making sure that stuff like just Desserts or Secret Blast, um, you know, would not have been this big. So it, it's just my mistake, I guess. 
I left in Valor because of Black Luster, <laughs> most conveniently, both in the hand. And I, even though Valor doesn't really do anything here in this matchup, or, well, matchup, I, I guess it kind of negates the, the Time Lord. The, is it Sephion? The blue one that bounces back all spells and traps? from your opponent, and you know, that's something that you definitely don't want. I want to keep my Dust Tornadoes and, uh, and so on set. Uh, so this is a cool Dragonfly plus Centipede Interaction plus um, Ladybug, yeah. Uh, again, I, I don't see any... No, 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 okay, so that I, I definitely want to go for damage up, so uh, go for... I believe the card is called Extra Stack, you know, it, it kind of equips or attaches uh, or equips, right, one of your opponent's monsters either on their field or in their graveyard. So immediately getting rid of the Time Lord and deal some damage. Draw BLS as well, so it's setting 4. Um, draw Typhoon, you definitely don't want to random Typhoon, so you know, just start popping stuff. We know Roar, uh, Roar is, uh, at least has been activated, so kind of you know, no battle phase. Uh, it's all fine though. Giga Mentis, I believe the name is, uh, I think, equipped on uh, Centipede, getting rid of my own Gaia again. I want more space, more insectors on the field and start popping my opponent's back row, but uh, the thing is, is that because I have Mystical Space Typhoon, I decide to pop both back row, even though there is of course the big, well the big, the chance that <laughs> the back row could indeed be Secret Blast, so again that's like, what is it, 1200 burn damage, plus I destroyed the Secret Blast with Hornet, so that's another 1k, and um, a little unfortunate is that the last one is also another Secret Blast, but it's fine though, because again if my opponent draws any trap like roar or dimension wall or whatever i'm just going to pop it during the end phase so even just desserts again it's just going is just going to get destroyed off of the mystical space typhoon so a third secret blast again would not have been game uh, so again that's what i wanted to make uh, you know sure that i had this game so um again you know to keep control against insectors and uh, uh, stuff like Heavy Storm definitely helps out. But this one is uh, definitely a good opening hand as well. You know, Dragonfly plus either Hornet or uh, Ladybug is always nice. Um, so getting the plus pluses, getting another search off of Centipede, basically setting up for next turn. And I do opt to go for Tiras, uh, kind of, you know, force out the Roars or Robokus or whatever. Uh, well, even with Wabuku, I can still pop, so Roar is definitely better for, uh, you know, prevent Tiras from attacking. That's the Time Lord, it's uh, it's indeed, yes, Zephion. So I could have potentially lost both my uh, Dust Tornadoes here, so the Compels definitely helped out. So again, okay. Normal Summon Dragonfly for, again, the, the bigger push. Uh, there is no light in the graveyard, but Tiras, I feel for now, is the only light I have. So, kind of establish my board. I'm not sure if we know. Uh, so, okay, it's Secret Barrel. Again, because of no Zect Caliber, I'm not sure. Okay, Hornet isn't there as well, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, there's a thing. I, I'm not sure why they didn't main Zect Caliber. Was it because of potential mirror match consistency worlds? I'm not sure. Is it Was it hit for worlds back then? Probably not. Kind of like a strange hit, right? But... Um, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, not running Z Caliber kind of, you know, gives you more uh, uh, options for hand traps or traps as a whole, so it's fine. Uh, again, starting, you know, start popping stuff, and this this was crucial. Again, not giving my opponent a potential Ajama Trio, you know, monster zones. Um, again, it gives your opponent just more burn cards or, you know, more cards to, uh, for, you know, stuff like Secret Blast or just desserts. And um, yeah, chain strike for uh, you know chain number four, uh, secret barrel as well. So, you know, still sitting at a comfortable three k, a little over three k life point. So this is fine. And uh, go for the what should we call it? Exa beetle. Yeah? Getting rid of Zephion. again. The card I believe cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects, but it's just a sitting duck to you know be destroyed by all of the insector cards. Well, you know, it's just a target for the Insector card. So I think this was an okay match. Um, you know, Chainburn kind of struggled a little bit against Insector popping, even though, you know, stuff like Secret Blast kind of punishes the Insector engine as well. So going uh, back, uh, well, uh, <laughs> well, back and forth, right. Next matchup, we have True uh, King Dino versus Spellbooks. Uh, so definitely, you know, feel free to leave suggestions which deck is going to, or predictions, which deck is going to take this one. Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a card or like if you enjoyed the video. Leave them signing out. Peace.